Happy Wednesday. It's live with Dr. Nancy. No one really new announcements this week. Um, we had a great um, drive for Oklahaven and we raised uh, $200 for that. So thank you for all that donated. This month, um, we're just gearing up for spring break. So uh, hopefully the cold will leave and we'll be ready to go on spring break. So today I have a very special doctor with me today, um, Dr. Dan Stock, who is a medical doctor who um, Practice is a little different than what you're used to. So what I'm gonna do is have Dr. Stock give us a little information about him and then how he practices. And then we're gonna talk about uh, neurotoxins today or biotoxins, I'm sorry, not neurotoxins. Um, welcome, Dr. Dan. Thank you very much for having me on. Thank but, you. Uh, my practice is uh, located in South Noblesville and it's a direct primary care practice, uh, which means I don't take third-party payment from insurance companies or governments or employers. Um, and my practice is what's called functional medicine, which is we're kind of the uh, the guys in medicine who wouldn't accept nobody knows what causes this disease just because we couldn't prove it with 95% certainty <laughs> to the government standards and instead actually find out the biochemical differences between the patient when they're healthy and the patient when they're sick and move them from that sick state back to being healthy again, knowing what made them get sick. And it was one of the things that led to my interest in biotoxins, along with the fact that biotoxins are responsible for my own illness. Um, yeah, so it's a little neat and personal. I, I started going to my traditional medicine colleagues and who made arguments that didn't make any sense to me and then said, nobody knows while you're sick. So I kept looking and finally found you know, a big piece of the answer was the biotoxin exposure. Okay. Uh, so what is biotoxins? Well, first thing I'd want people to know about a biotoxin is, and biotoxins have two characteristics. Uh, they make something on the inside of a human cell not work right, and they are made by some other organism that you and I evolved to live with in our environment. And because we evolved with them, we all make a receptor which can bind to that biotoxin. And as soon as it binds the biotoxin, it starts stimulating inflammatory cytokine production. So this served us well when you and I would get moldy food and we'd bring it up to our nose and all of a sudden these biotoxins would bind to the receptors in our nose and our, brain, our nose would start making inflammatory toxins and tell our brain, put that away and get away from that, that's not good for you. Uh, the problem is there are several sources that make biotoxins to get into the human body that actually escape this easy identification that they're getting in. Um, that then make it so that you can't know that you're being hurt and they can cause you a chronic inflammation. And it's important to know about these biotoxins. The damage they call, cause inside of the cell isn't actually their biggest problem. It's the fact that they stimulate that production of inflammatory cytokines, which is what's making the problem occur. Um, and uh, the two biggest sources where people are getting exposed to biotoxins are by water damaged buildings, which can be damaged by something as simple as just having too much humidity. Uh, we actually have a test now that can identify those houses with probably 98 plus percent certainty. And I can tell you the demographic data says half the houses in the country are causing the people who live in them inflammation and all of the consequences that come from being chronically inflamed. And then wow. the other source, yeah, I know it's a frighteningly high number. Uh, it's mm -hmm. just frighteningly high. Yeah. Um, the other source of this, which I've only stumbled onto recently, is apparently a lot of dental restoration work, especially root canals, actually traps bacteria in the teeth in a way that the immune system can't get rid of them. And they can sit there and produce biotoxins and pump them in through your jawbone for the remainder of your life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, I've had this actually, since learning about this, I've had this demonstrated in about three of my patients already where we found out teeth that looked like they were good teeth were actually causing chronic biotoxin exposure in the patient's body and making them sicker and stink. One of them to the point they had rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so it's kind of the, after you've identified uh, sources of these biotoxin exposures, um, then comes the removal of them, and then comes cleaning up the mess they leave behind. So let's backtrack a little bit sure. and talk about how can people test their home? Do you? Yeah, there's, a, there's something called a Hertz Me test, H-E-R-T-S-M-I. Um, there are two companies that do a good test, one called Mycometrics and the other one called Envirobiomics. 
Uh, this is basically, basically, it's a specially prepared Swiffer cloth that you wipe up the dust in your house from, and they send it off and analyze it. And given that the dust is produced at a given rate, if they find a rate of um, spore equivalence from the toxin producing mold in there, then they've got pretty good data that corroborates that says, hey, if your score is greater than this, we can't cure you if you live in that house. And if we, you get to a house that's clean and we do cure you and you go back into this house, you'll get sick again. Okay. So we've got it pretty well validated to predict what you want to know, which is the clinical response of the patient. Because at yeah. the end of the day, you know, you want to know what a test predicts and it hurts me testing, at least when done by envirobiomics and mycometrics, um, very accurately predicts the health outcome of a human being living in that house. Okay, um, interesting. So, and I, I now advise all of my patients to do their house and their workplace uh, to make sure that they've got this covered as a minimum. And and this isn't your specialty, but then do you have patients that are able to get rid of the um, mold in the house? Well, the, a lot of patients can do it themselves. Many times it's just because they have an undehumidified uh, crawl space. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because if you have a crawl space in Indiana, every time it rains, the humidity in that crawl space, if it's not sealed and dehumidified, it's going to be greater than 60%. And that's all the mold needs to start making toxins. Okay. And so then it'll pump those right up into the house of the person and they get to breathe it the rest of their life because it'll, it'll go right in through your lungs. It's, it's airborne, these toxins are. Uh, they absorb through skin. If you put your hand on a dusty surface that's loaded with toxins, they'll absorb right through your skin. Um, and so it's, sometimes it's just as simple as sealing and dehumidifying the crawl space and then cleaning the house. Um, other times we find you've got leaks places and there's been lots of damage to the superstructure and you have to have somebody come in and do that kind of work. But okay. uh, the, and the test can kind of give us some clues as to where the problem is coming from. Okay, great. Um, I'll let you go on now. Sorry. <laughs> I, said, I think one of the things that's probably most important for people to know about these biotoxins is how human beings get rid of them. Because uh, the way we get them out of our body is that the inflammation stimulates the production of an antibody which binds to the toxin, signals a white blood cell to eat and destroy that toxin. And that is the major way we get rid of these things. The reason that's important is because one out of every four human beings has a genetic defect that makes it so they cannot make antibodies against those toxins. And yeah, this 25% of the population is in super big danger because these guys walk around collecting them from every building they walk into getting more and more and more building up in their body until they are inflamed all day long at high levels. And it's not uncommon for us to see this, especially in somebody who develops in young life a severe neurologic, immunologic, or psychiatric issue, uh, that they're one of these people who can't clear out these biotoxins. Uh, we can actually identify those people because there's an online test you can do called a visual contrast test. And these guys will fail visual contrast tests. Mm -hmm. um, and I have all of my patients do one of those as well so that I can identify whether or not they've accumulated biotoxins. Because if you have accumulated them, there's only one really good way to get rid of them. That's a prescription medication. Um, mm -hmm. The one nod we have to give the pharmaceutical industry is they did make one good way to get rid of biotoxins for the normal human being, but uh, yeah. for that unfortunate 25% of the population. But uh, biotoxin susceptibility is not rare. Um, it so is not a rare condition at all. For the people watching that have done like the genetic 23andMe test, would this SNP show up on there, the um, mutation? Uh, okay. No, we, we know some of the mutations that are on there, and they may show up on there, but it doesn't really tell you what you want to know, which is do you already have them built up? I mean, if you have the bad genetics and you never go into a moldy building, it never shows up, you know? On right. the other hand, just because you, and, and having the genetics, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna put everybody on that medicine just because they have the genetics. Right. On the other right. hand, if they fail a visual contrast test, I tell somebody, mm -hmm. now you, you've told me not only do I have the genetics, mm -hmm. um, and you found a, a much cheaper way to find out you have the genetics, mm -hmm. um, but you've also uh, told me you need treatment in a specific fashion to improve your health. Interesting. What are some of the symptoms that people would show up with? You know, it's, it, it is as variable as the number of toxins um, and the number of genes that can be deranged by that toxin. Um, so to tell you that there, it can be everything from foggy brain and fatigue, which are probably the two major ones. Um, but we can see this inflammation presenting as rheumatoid arthritis, severe depression, anxiety. 
um, think of any immunologic, rheumatologic, um, psychiatric, or neurologic condition, because most of these toxins exert most of their injury uh, to the nervous system more than other places. But we think because of different solubilities of different toxins and different blends of toxin, because you never find a house which is making just one toxin, it's usually making three or four, and it depends on how many of those it's making, will determine exactly which cells in the body are going to get sickest, and that determines the symptoms that come out. One of the things that took so long to get this worked out by Dr. Shoemaker and the guys who worked with him on doing this was because there wasn't really any one symptom that you could put your hat on. Fatigue and brain fog were the ones that we would see the most common uh, presentation with. Um, but there's actually a list of eight different, excuse me, 13 different clusterings of uh, 27 different symptoms that we will see show up in these people at different combinations that actually help us make the diagnosis. Uh, but they usually are of a neurologic, immunologic, or psychiatric um, uh, variety of this. Which is very common today. It, it's not rare. Yeah. I mean, yeah. In fact, people talk about this all being due to diet. And, I, and I'm sure you agree with me that diet's a huge component of this because you can right. blame a human being with a bad diet. I hate to see it being said that it's all diet because I've got people in my practice who are following wonderful diets and lifestyles who are still sicker than stink. Yeah. All because they were living in buildings that were really bad or they had a mouthful of nasty teeth. Um, wow. And so, the, the, you know, it really hurts me more than to see a very obese person who is desperately following a wonderful lifestyle and still not losing weight, only to find out they failed their visual contrast test and their house has a hurts me score of 24. Wow. And I tell them, you know, I understand, man. Everybody says it's wag their finger. You're a glutton. You're not in that. I got your explanation for you now. Um, I think the other thing people need to know about these biotoxin illnesses, which is shared with any inflammatory situation, is if you cause enough inflammation long enough at a high enough level, you can actually turn off the part of the brain we call the hypothalamus, which runs all of the internal organs. Every gland controls whether or not your kidney resorbs salt and water, controls whether you feel hungry or thirsty. Um, controls whether you're going to burn energy and what kind you're going to burn. You can actually get that so that it's in a self-sustaining way turned off and it will run things wrong and you'll see menstrual abnormalities and thyroid disorders and all of this, not because the gland is damaged, but only because the brain's not running it right anymore. Interesting. Um, yeah, so people that are having normal thyroid tests or things like that that don't know what's wrong. As a matter of fact, the most common test we were taught to use in medical school uh, to test for thyroid conditions misses nearly all of those people um, wow. because it all it says is gee is is your brain happy with the thyroid but if the brain's the problem it won't tell you that the thyroid's not working right because it's just not running it right and that test misses all of those people i have wow. a ton of people who i'm managing thyroid conditions on who have never had an abnormal tsh test yeah um, but you get their levels back and they're all low levels and when you test them they fail visual contrast tests or their hurts me scores are terrible or their mouth is full of nasty teeth and all of this gets just totally missed by traditional medicines very superficial laboratory analysis that we were taught in medical school right yeah i know functional medicine doctors do a whole nother type of testing and and functional medicine doctors also spend a lot of time with their patients don't they yeah, as a matter of fact, my new patient appointment, if you come to me perfectly healthy, is an hour and a half. Um, if you come to me with one or two symptoms, it's two hours. And if you come to me with a disaster, it's two and a half hours. Uh, yeah. By the time I have heard your story, otherwise, I tell people, look, I'm going to end up ordering $5,000 worth of tests on you. If I do your history and physical exam, I can cut a great deal of that out. And frankly, um, the definition of good health care is never one that you and I can make. It's only a definition the person on the exam table can make, and they have to be informed before they can make that decision. And right. it just takes a lot of time to do that. I, I wish I could tell you the number of times I sat down and talked with a patient, and I was thinking I was going to get this diagnosis. And they said, well, you know, there's was this one weird time back then, and I heard this story, and I was like, you just, I, you, you got biotoxin buildup. I, I guarantee yeah. you, you just told me yeah. that. Um, and you can't get that if you're trying to rush through appointments for 10 or 15 minutes, even 20 right. minutes. You can't do a new patient that fast. Uh, at least I can't. Maybe there's smarter doctors than me who can, but I can't. Yeah. No, and that's and I think that's the thing that people need to realize is why functional medicine doctors do cash is because you do spend a lot of time with the patient as opposed to going to your doctor and you get 15 minutes, if that, to tell them everything. And a lot of the diagnosis is in the history. So you need to talk. 
And well, need the time to talk. And functional medicine is very complicated. Um, I like yeah. patients to know, you know, when you have 25 variables in equation, you can't become 95% sure of anything you do. Trial and error has to be done and talking with the patient finds that out. The problem is in third party payment systems, they pay doctors better if they'll see 10 people for six minutes than one patient for an hour. So right. if you want to have the time to speak, they'll bankrupt your practice. Um, yeah. <laughs> you just can't do it. And yeah. I'm not comfortable using half my brain when I know the other half is idle. So um, you know, I can't send the person out and says, gee, I don't know you're, why you're sick, but I'm pretty sure I know why you're sick. <laughs> <laughs> so, so your patients that come to you, um, they're coming in because they have health issues, but it's not necessarily they come in saying, oh, you're a biotoxin guy. He's, right. it's just, I have this health issue that I can't figure out what's wrong. And yeah, I mean, biotoxin illness is one of the ways to get inflamed. Yeah. Um, I have a fair number of people who are coming to me just because they're getting inflamed by other mechanisms, usually by diet or lifestyle, mm -hmm. nutritional deficiency. Um, I think a lot of them don't realize you can eat a wonderful diet and still be nutritionally deficient. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of that. You know, that's kind of what functional medicine is, is we just get down to the basic biochemistry of how are you different than when you were healthy? What's yeah. the difference between you and a healthy person in your same situation? Um, and we don't stop at this old sob, it's your genetics. Um, I can tell you that most of our research says we can usually explain only 15 to 20% of any disease by genetics. Right. It is, yeah, it's 80, 80, 85% of it's the environment, meaning their behaviors and the places they live and work. And, and I, you know, this idea that it's genetic, just accept your disease is one which is very painfully, superficially thought out to me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> So um, what ages do you see in your office? Uh, I don't see dead people and I don't see people in the womb. <laughs> Other than that, I have them through all those age ranges. Um, I'm well, a I, rolled my practice out. I, was, I started yeah. in the womb. <laughs> I, the way I tell people is I'm, I'm actually just a regular old family doctor who likes to fix things. It's just I don't like to halfway fix them. That's awesome. Uh, I, you know, if, if it's a common disease, I just look, if somebody knows how to fix it and I don't, I want to learn it. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Well, before we end today, is there anything that you want to share with our audience that I didn't ask you or you didn't cover yet? Um, no, I think when it comes to biotoxins, I think the major thing is just make people aware that this is probably at least 50 to 60 percent of illness in the country right now is being caused by biotoxins. Um, I would say that's that's a pretty fair number, especially knowing that half of the houses are exposing people and one quarter of the people are susceptible. That means one out of every eight people in the country is actually ill because of a biotoxin illness just on a statistical basis. Wow. Um, so that's far from a rare condition. Yeah. Now, is that the visual um, contrast test, is that something somebody can just go online and look at, or is that something you prescribe? No, it's something you do online. Uh, there's a, a free site called vcstest.com. Uh, their test can give false positives. And then there's another one that can be done in a site called survivingmold.com. And their test is very good. Um, I would just make sure anybody knows before they do a visual contrast test that if you don't have correction for an astigmatism, it will give you false positives. So make sure if you have get somebody to test you and make sure if you have an astigmatism that you have a pair of glasses or contacts that corrects for it before you take the test. Uh, you can usually kind of tell when somebody's got a goofy test because of an astigmatism because it gives kind of goofy answers, but sometimes it can fool you and it makes you think you got a problem you really don't have. And um, the, the medicine we use to clear these toxins out of people is a rather unkind, expensive regimen, so I don't want to do it to anybody for the wrong reason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think people pay me money to make them go bankrupt and get misery for nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, Dr. Stone, thank you, or St Stock, I keep calling it Stone, sorry, Dr. Stock, All thank right. you so much for joining us today. It was great information. It's really something I wasn't aware of. People say mold toxicity and you just kind of like, oh yeah, okay, but um, but how it affects our body, your explanation was wonderful. I really appreciate that. So thank you. Um, if anybody has questions about this, drop them in our comments and we'll pass them along to Dr. Stock. Um, we put his website up there, purehealthmed.com. And uh, he is in South Noblesville, 146 and 37. So if you want a family doctor that gets to the cause of the problem, he's your guy. <laughs> so 
Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate great information. And if anybody watching can share this video and um, spread the word, we'd appreciate it. Thanks Thank so much you. for having me on. Thank you.